Welcome to the Sibsey West Midlands Region vlog and podcast. My name is Josh Brownlee and I'm the chair for the Sibsey West Midlands Region Committee. In a previous episode, we briefly introduced the REBA plan of work, which outlines the eight work stages of briefing, designing, constructing and operating building projects and explains the stage outcomes, core tasks and information exchanges required at each stage. Today, we're looking at stage two. A robust and carefully considered concept design is key. It's important because most of the concept designs sets the tone for the project. After early engagement at stage one, the concept stage is a crucial part of the design process. Why is it so important? Typically, an m and consultant would be approached at stage two concept design to support a project. As mentioned previously, however, some of the design steps would already have been completed by this stage, which is why early engagement is so important. But having been appointed at stage two, the consultant can rapidly mobilize to support the project. At REBA stage two, concept design, the architect prepares the concept model for the project incorporating strategic engineering requirements, which is aligned to the cost plan, project strategies and outline specification. Being able to feed the m &E requirements into the concept model is vital at this early stage. Plant rooms, risers, ventilation shafts, intakes, etc., are all classed as strategic engineering requirements. Those previous elements are required to develop the cost plan or for the consideration of project risks. Having an awareness and supporting the project strategy provides a clear understanding of project goals. Supporting the outline specification with regards to M&E building services enhances the project definition. Having completed the feasibility st study at stage one, the concept design should capture the items identified in the project brief, the quality aspirations and in line with the study. The design key team can then develop an m and &E model that carefully considers all of the other team members' requirements and constraints. Key m and &E goals of stage two, developing core requirements from stage one, consideration of cost plan with m and &E approach, input known DNO district network operator information statutory utility authority supplies to support the m and &E model, review feasibility study and input options of renewable technologies, define performance matrix and design targets, discuss options for m and &E building services for the preferred solution, advise on significant spatial implications from m and plant, full design review. If the project needs to achieve BREAM targets, then some credits can be won at this early stage. Over the coming episodes in the series, we'll be looking at how building services play a crucial role throughout the design stages. In follow-up posts, we'll illustrate how m and building services engineers closely follow the links between BISRIA and REBA to ensure all members of the design team are working collaboratively towards a common goal. This series has kindly been sponsored by ADR Consulting Engineers and uses content authored and produced by them, which is also available via their blog on the website. ADR are based in Canterbury, but have projects across the country, including within the West Midlands region. ADR are a group of like-minded building services engineers that have established themselves through academic or practical backgrounds. All of their engineers are professionally accredited and a proven track record in delivering award-winning projects. They love what they do and that shows through their work. We thank Lex Ruzi and the team at ADR for their help, support and input to the series. Thank you.